I arrived here a little bit early this morning uh, because I'm actually going to school today. And uh, I thought uh, before the class I would shoot a little video for you guys talking about um, the photo settings uh, that are available on the drone. I've seen a few questions in the comments uh, regarding this and uh, some of you would like to know uh, what are the best settings uh, for photo. So let's just look at what options are available and maybe discuss which of those would be optimal for setting. I don't have any ND fillers or anything on the drone, so this is what you see. What you see is what you get, is the raw image recorded directly into the drone. Let's use the school here as an example for the image settings or for the photos. And then we will start by flicking it into photo mode. And then we can start by seeing what options are available for taking photos. Most of those are probably obvious for you. Uh, because you have been in here, but you can do like a single photo. Let's do one of those. And then I can uh, do a 48 megapixel photo. The sensor is actually a real 48 megapixel uh, sensor, but it's using quad bio technology. You will actually end up getting a better image because it combines four pixels into a single point on the image at the 12 megapixel version. So the 48 megapixel version is the raw sensor input basically. That's a 48. I will include a link to an article in the comments below about the quad bio technology in case that you want to learn more about that. Then you have the AEB option. The AEB option is a really nice if you want to do high dynamic range images or HDR images. This one is a three bracket. So it basically takes one photo that is neutrally exposed, one that's overexposed and one that is underexposed. Let's just do that. Let's see, now it's capturing three images. And those can be combined in third-party software into some really nice uh, HDR image where you can sort of expand the dynamic range of the sensor. So if I cheat a little bit and I've done this in post, it would look something like this. Two other options, uh, one is burst, that will allow you to take a lot of images at once. So if you are uh, sort of filming around action and uh, you're not sure when it's really going to happen, you can do like a three or five, three, five, seven burst shot so if I just do a seven here. So what you see now is that it's shooting seven images sequentially uh, right after each other. And, and you might capture the right frame among these images. There's time shots. Can ask the drone to capture an image for every 10 seconds. So you can do that, like just flying around. Let's just fly a little bit around here. So what it would do is, yeah, so it captures an image. And we're flying here. There's a nice countdown on the screen that will allow you to see what's going on. And then it's capturing another image. And you can stop it at any time where you have sufficient amount of uh, photos uh, for <laughs> whatever it is that you're trying to uh, achieve. Put it back in the single photo mode. I actually prefer to do the AB option with three brackets. In case that uh, the image is a little bit over and underexposed, I have the opportunity to go back and pick one of the others or at least uh, do the combination uh, with the HDR. Uh, if we look at the bottom of the screen, we can see there's room for a lot of images here I can do 9,999 images. <laughs> so if I just tap the icon, I get some uh, information about how much storage is available uh, for doing this. There's the, the option to click what type of images that you want. Do you want a JPEG only, where the drone basically takes care of uh, the editing? Or do you want a raw option where you have to do the editing yourself? So you can basically pick a JPEG only, or you can pick JPEG plus raw. In that way, you would get both options so you can decide if you're happy with whatever the drone has produced or if you want to go out and uh, yeah, pull the image into a third-party editor and uh, do the editing yourself. There's one that I've been talking about a lot here. There's this option to set the exposure. So I can basically underexpose or overexpose the image if I want to do that for certain scenarios because I know this drone has a tendency to at least uh, overexpose the bright areas. So I like to underexpose everything by a little bit at least. You have the option like you have with video to switch between auto and uh, pro mode. And here you basically get access to adjusting all the parameters uh, to your likings, if you prefer that. 
But as this is a fixed aperture drone where you don't have any variable aperture in front of the lens, the options for adjusting this is quite limited. So by just using the EV value that is available uh, on the auto setting, you would get quite far. Let's just take a look here before the return to home kicks in, what camera settings are available. There's some of the settings that we just talked about. They will also appear here under the camera menu, the JPEG and JPEG plus RAW option. You can decide if you want to shoot 4.3 or 69. I prefer 4.3 because 69 is basically a cropped in version of uh, the 4.3. Let's just do a comparison here. So we just take this image here, we put it down here to minus like this. Then we take one image in 4.3. We jump in the menu again here, we put it at 16.9. Take another one and then I can put them on the screen so you can see them next to each other. So the 4.3 is basically what you want. You get the maximum flexibility if you want to crop in the photo later. Or the remaining settings are more or less identical to what you have uh, when you're shooting video. So you have the possibility to yeah, mess around with the anti-flicker if you're flying around uh, artificial light. You have uh, the histogram, which is basically a graphical representation of what you see in the image. So if the chart is pushed either to the left or to the right, the image is either under or overexposed. So you want in an ideal scenario, you want the chart to be positioned equally between left and right. We can talk while it's coming back here. There's the overexposure warnings. Those are basically zebra stripes that are being shown on the screen that will show you real time which areas of the footage is overexposed. So now I just cranked up and uh, yeah, basically overexposed uh, the image on purpose. And uh, what you can see now is uh, that the sky yeah, is, uh, is overexposed because of the zebra stripes. So this is a nice indication uh, that uh, what's going on here. So that was a nifty little trick to land on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> that you go in and turn off the sensors because they actually prevented me from landing on the roof. So let's continue here. The peaking levels. That's basically a way to see which part of the image is in focus. So if I switch it into manual focus and I pull up and down on this dial, you can see the areas that are highlighted with red are the area that is in focus. I don't want to risk anything out of focus, so I usually use Auto. You also have something that will help you uh, do the compositions right. The composition is basically a, a way of positioning the objects inside the image in a way so they look pleasant to the eye. And uh, to help you with that, you have either like a cross here that will allow you to identify the center of the image, but you also have something that's very, very helpful, which is uh, these grid lines. These grid lines is called rule of third. You might have heard that in some other context because that basically divides the screen into nine equally sized squares. And by a lot of experimentation uh, back and forward, uh, by aligning objects in the intersections or along the lines, you are getting an image that is more pleasant to the eye. This is definitely a topic that I will be covering in details in my course that I'll be launching on the Academy, which I've just have founded. In case you're a new drone pilot and want to check out the Academy, of course, I've left a link in the description below. Down here, you have a white balance. You have the option to let the drone do the work for you, or you can put it in manual mode and that way you can mess around with this so you get the temperature that you like. There's basically two numbers that you need to know on the Kelvin scale below here if you decide to run it in manual. And that's the condition that you gotta use if uh, it's sunny or if it's overcast. I've just write these two uh, numbers on the screen here. But again, this is just recommendations. If you like that your image should be completely blue, that's up to you. But at least now you know how to adjust it. I usually put it in auto because at least with photos, the drone is doing a pretty consistent job with the, the white balance. You have uh, the option down here to uh, basically mess around with either uh, sharpness or noise reduction. Could be useful if you are planning to use the images directly out of the drone. But in most cases, I actually prefer to do this in post with the photo editing software that I'm using. And in the bottom, you have USB mode, caches when recording, max video cache capacity, which you can basically ignore when we are talking photo settings. So what are the best settings for photo? Yeah, probably you would want me to come with a recommendation, but I really can't because it depends on the situation. But as a general guideline, you should maximize your potential to get good images when you're out there because the work is the same. So what you can do is you can enable the JPEG and the RAW option. So you're getting both types of images. You can take down the exposure 
so you're underexposing the image. So there's no areas in the image that is overexposed because images are overexposed or areas of the image is overexposed. This means that the data that's inside this area will likely be lost and you have no chance of recovering this in post. So underexpose, if you prefer 0.3 or minus one, that's a little bit up to you. These units are basically stops where one stop equals either halving or doubling the amount of light. So I like 0.7. This is a nice setting for me. I would also recommend that you use the A, B option. You get more images, but at least you will increase your chances of getting something really, really good by many times by having three images at different exposure levels. You have the JPEG and you have the raw version. I know it's a lot of extra, but you really appreciate it when you're sitting and scrolling through the images that you have a lot of options to choose from. This is also why I'm using 128 gigabyte of storage on the drone because with all the video and all the images that I'm taking, it's really nice to have plenty of space and not have to worry about that part. Use the 4.3 format and not the cropped version is 16.9. And I will always recommend to have the histogram and the overexposure warnings enabled because it can be sometimes a bit difficult to sort of judge the quality of the image when you're out flying in bright sunlight. It's really nice to have access to those tools because that will give you an easy overview if your image has been fatally overexposed. Just know one thing, if you're filming against the sun, that part will always be overexposed. Most of this is uh, also useful for other drones like the Mini 2 as well as the Mini 3, the Nut Pro version. And as I mentioned during the video, if you're interested in checking out the new uh, Drone Academy uh, community that I've just founded, which basically caters for all you new drone pilots and uh, DJI hobbyists just want to make better use of your drone and fly more confident in public. Community part is already running and a lot of good discussions is already going on over there. So jump into the description of the video. You will find the link so you can sign up if this is something for you. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give a like. If you did like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.